Aloha. Welcome board members, uh, manager to this September 28th, 2020 public hearing and regular board meeting for the Board of Water Supply. I am Board Chair Brian Andaya. I want to take a moment to take a roll call of all of the board members who are present. Please say aye when I call your name. Vice Chair Kapua Spro. Aye. Board member Jade Butai. Aye. Thank you. Uh, board member Ross Sasamura. Aye. Uh, board member Ray Soon. Aye. Um, board member Max Sword. Okay, maybe he'll join us a little later. Uh, members and um, those of you who are calling or video conferencing in, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking and you're not intending to speak uh, to the entire audience. If you have a question, enter a motion or second a motion on an action item, make a comment or want to applaud something or someone, uh, please unmute your microphone. You are fr uh, free to do that at any time uh, and identify yourself uh, before uh, continuing to speak as some of you may sound the same. Also in the room with us today is a manager, Ernest Lau, Board Secretary Joy Cruz Achifu, Achiu, excuse me, and Information Specialist Stephen Nordstrom. On the phone with us are Jeff Lau and Jessica Wong, both from the City and County Corporation Council. Uh, the purpose of today's public hearing is to consider the proposed amendment uh, to the fiscal year 2020-2021 capital improvement program budget for the Board of Water Supply. A notice of public hearing appeared in the September 18th, 2020th of the Honolulu Star Advertiser newspaper. Before beginning today's hearing, I would like to state that this board is dedicated to providing safe, dependable, and affordable water to our customers. We will start this public hearing by having a presentation by Executive Assistant Ms. Raylin Nakabayashi uh, of the Executive Support Office. The public hearing is now open. Let us begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair and members. Oh yeah, well, um, Raylin, while you're doing that, um, there's a couple of things, a um, couple of announcements I need to make uh, today. Um, Pursuant to the 12th Supplementary Proclamation issued by Governor David Ige on August 26, 2020, related to the COVID-19 emergency, in order to allow public participation in a manner consistent with social distancing practices, the following procedures are in effect for the meeting. A testimony can be provided in a number of ways. A written testimony may be emailed to board that's spelled out B-O-A-R-D at hbws.org. Again, it's board at hbws.org. You can also fax testimony to 808-748-5079. Uh, you can mail in a testimony to uh, the Board of Water Supply, 630 Baratania Street, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96843. Uh, online will be online testimony will be accepted at boardofwatersupply.com slash testimony. Finally, you are able to call in today if you um, would like to our line at 808-748-6040. You'll be placed in a queue and brought up to testify one at a time. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Ms. Nakabayashi. Thank you. So um, I'm here to assist Raylan Nakabayashi from the Executive Support Office. Um, I'm here to present our proposed amendment to the fiscal year 2020 to 2021 Capital Improvement Program budget. So our proposed uh, amendment is an amendment to Resolution 910-2020, which was adopted by this board on May 26, 2020, and it um, appropriated um, $207.85 million in operating funds for the operating budget and $170.13 million for the CIP budget. There will be no change, uh, there's no change proposed to the operating budget and this public hearing is to consider an amendment to increase the CIP budget 
to 201.59 million, um, an increase of 31.46 million dollars. So I'll explain the proposed changes in detail by fund on the following slides. In the operating fund, we are proposing to remove the project line item for Haiku stairs. Um, as you know, effective July 1st, the, we don't need to proceed with the design for a removal project as the city has taken control of the stairs. We're also adding $3 million to a propose, or for a project um, to expand our lab and control center to our Manana base yard. And we are proposing an increase to our construction cost index account related to the new construction project out at Manana and an increase to our contract adjustments account of $2.3 million. So the increase in operating funds uh, totals $5.5 million and will result in an ending operating fund balance of $18 million. This equates to 32 days of working capital, but it does not account for the $12 million of PROFI funds that are available to BWS from the Drinking Water SRF program. If you add back the $12 million in reimbursements that we may be able to get from Drinking Water SRF, we would be at 53 days of working capital. Okay. In the improvement fund, we're proposing to add one new project, the Lani Kai Water System Improvements Project Part 2, and um, that's $4.2 million with an increase in construction cost index account of $420,000 uh, related to that same project. And the increase in total is $4.62 million, and it will be covered by excess proceeds from our last year's bond issuance. So this doesn't increase the need for new money to be issued for fiscal 2020-21. And finally, <coughs> we're proposing to increase a specific project line item Kalawahine 180 Reservoir from $17 million to $18.2 million and add a new project line for Kalawahine uh, Reservoir's connecting pipelines for a total of $18.2 million and an increase to the construction cost index account to cover these two projects for Kalawahine. So the total increase to the special expendable fund uh, will be $21.34 million dollars and is available within the existing special ex uh, fund balance. So this amendment includes the rebudgeting of funds that lapsed um, in prior fiscal years. So in summary, um, we're requesting the board authorize um, an increase in our CIP budget to $201.59 million. Um, the largest proposed increase an appropriation is in the special expendable fund, um, bringing up the total appropriation to $54.86 million, a net change of $21.34 million. And again, this is within the fund's available balance. The next largest increase is in operating funds for $5.5 million. And it does um, include projects that weren't previously identified when we came up with the budget. Um, and presented it to you in May. This project is particularly important, the expansion of the labs and the control center at Manana as we deal with COVID-19 and expand our capacity and resiliency um, to respond to emergencies. It's also, <coughs> I'm sorry, an opportunity to capitalize on the use of CARES funds that were made available um, in March, April of 20, 20 that we didn't um, previously know were available, so we uh, capitalized on that opportunity, awarded a design contract, and now are coming back to the board to pursue the construction related to our design. And finally, the um, increase of $4.62 million in the improvement fund is for the Lani Kai Water Systems Project, which is being pushed up from fiscal 22 to 21 to avoid construction conflicts that would inevitably delay the project even further if we didn't push it up. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Chair, if I could also add, uh, this is our Ernie uh, manager. Um, this is actually the first time we've uh, amended the budget, uh, the CIP, the Capital Improvement Program budget, uh, in the past eight years that I've been with uh, as manager for the Board of Water Supply. 
I think the other thing that just uh, comes to mind right now is the importance for us to keep, continue uh, to, as much as we can afford, to uh, get the CIP projects out. And by enlarging this project, this will be putting on the street about $200 million in capital improvement program budgets that can go to bid, go out and help uh, keep our construction industry going uh, during this difficult economic time. So I know it's a lot of money going to $201 million for our CIP, larger than we have uh, in many years. But I think it's very timely to do it right now, especially when our island's economy needs the, the boost of more construction jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, board members, any uh, questions or comments? Okay, um, if there are no questions or comments from the board, uh, we're now going to move on to public testimony. Uh, Mr. Nordstrom, any uh, one here to testify? Okay, let the record reflect that there are um, no testifiers uh, today. Um, are, have, have there been any emailed, written, online, or telephone testimony? Uh, none, Chair. All right, the record will reflect that there has been no uh, email written on, or online uh, testimony that was submitted. All right, uh, any, anyone else have any questions before we um, close the public hearing? All right, um, I will hereby um, close the public hearing and we will now begin our regular meeting. All right, today, um, September 28, 2020, we do have uh, four items on our agenda requiring board action. The first of which is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held on August 24, 2020. Uh, I hope you've all, um, board members, I hope you've had the opportunity to review them. Um, I would entertain at this time a motion uh, to approve the minutes. Chair, this is Rob, so move. Second, this is Jay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have a motion on the floor by member Sasamura uh, to approve um, the minutes held on of the meeting held on August 24, 2020. It has been seconded by um, a member uh, Butai. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving the minutes um, for the meeting held on August 24, 2020, please say aye. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I think we have to go to a Vote. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Kapospro. Aye. Board Member Ray Soon. Board Member Ray Soon. Uh, Ray, you might be on mute. Yeah, he's on mute. Board member Max Sword. Oh, can you unmute him? Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Yes, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Keep. Okay. Yeah. Yes, got it. Thank you. Board member Ross Sasamura. Hi. Oh, is that yes, hi? Is that you, Ray? This is Ray, yes, I. Got it, thank you. Board member Jade Butai. Aye. And Chair Brian Andai. Aye. Chair, motion passed with five ayes. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Uh, we are now going to move on to the next item uh, requiring board action, which is the adoption of resolution number 914-2020 uh, and this is in regards to uh, Mr. Carl Iwasaki, 
who has been named 2020 Employee of the Year. Manager Lau. Uh, thank you, uh, Board Chair. Uh, Ernie Lau, Manager. Uh, traditionally, I would read the resolution, uh, but if Chair would uh, beg uh, his indulgence, I'd like to actually have Carl's supervisor which is the head of the Water Quality Division, the Program Administrator, Mr. Erwin Kawata, uh, read Carl's uh, resolution. And we have Carl here in the room with us. Carl, can you also stand up? Uh, come up in, in the front here, and then uh, you can just stay standing there. And then uh, Erwin, can you, uh, Erwin will join us via WebEx and uh, read the resolution for Carl. Erwin? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lau. Uh, on behalf of the Water Quality Division, I'd like to congratulate Carl for being selected Employee of the Year. Uh, we are certainly all very proud of him. Um, I'd like to read the resolution which states, Board of Water Supply, City and County of Honolulu, resolution number 914-2020. Carl Iwasaki, 2020 Employee of the Year. Whereas Carl Iwasaki, a water microbiologist five with the Water Quality Division, has been a dedicated and exceptional employee since joining the Board of Water Supply in 1998 and was selected as the Department's 2020 Employee of the Year. And whereas Mr. Iwasaki, uh, Iwasaki effectively supervises the microbiology laboratory and contributes to the BWS mission on ensuring the delivery of safe and dependable drinking water to residents now and into the future. And whereas Mr. Iwasaki led a project to implement a new cloud-based smartphone laboratory data system that significantly improved the management of laboratory information previously done using an outdated and failing pocket personal computer program. And whereas, when news of the coronavirus surfaced, Mr. Iwasaki established a highly resourceful plan to ensure that the laboratory was fully stocked and that his staff was well prepared to meet the upcoming challenges. And whereas, with his trademark smile, Carl Iwasaki continues to work tirelessly and resourcefully to create a positive workplace where camaraderie is accentuated and whereas Carl Iwasaki has been selected as a 2020 Board of Water Supply Employee of the Year and will go on to represent BWS in the upcoming City Employee of the Year recognition ceremony, bringing pride and honor to the department, his family and friends, and now therefore, be it resolved by the members of the Board of Water Supply City and County of Honolulu, that we do hereby express to Carl Iwasaki our sincere appreciation for his outstanding service to the department and to the City and County of Honolulu, and be it further resolved that the members of this board express to Carl Iwasaki our sincere congratulations upon his selection as the Board of Water Supply Employee of the Year for 2020, and be finally resolved that this resolution be presented to Mr. Iwasaki with our heartfelt aloha and best wishes for success in all of his future endeavors. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Kawata, Manager Lau. Um, I'm now going to uh, call for a motion uh, to adopt uh, this resolution uh, in honor of Mr. Iwasaki. Members? Chair, this is Ross, so move. Hi, this is Ray, I second. All right, um, thank you very much. Uh, it has been uh, moved by um, uh, Member Sasamura and seconded by um, Member Soon to adopt resolution 914-2020, uh, naming Mr. Carl Iwasaki 2020 Employee of the Year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor. Hey, I, I, I would like to say, um, Carl, is Carl there? Uh, yes, yes, he is. Carl, can you step forward? Okay, I, uh, Carl, I, I just wanted to emphasize that they're really fantastically talented and committed people who work at the Board of Water Supply. And that you rose to the top and, and elected by, by your peers um, says a lot for your contribution. And, and I just wanted to personally say thank you very much. But we really appreciate the, the work that you guys do, and, and in particular this year, the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Member you. Soon. Um, um, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 
Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. You have to do a roll call. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry people. <laughs> uh, this is the new normal, I suppose. Yeah, the new normal is um, roll call. <laughs> uh, Madam Secretary, let's have a roll call vote. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Kapoa Sprout. Aye. Board Member Ray Soon. Aye. Board Member Rasa Samura. Aye. Board Member Jade Wutai. Aye. And Chair Brian Andaya. Aye. Chair motion passes with five ayes. Thank you very much. Um, everybody, please uh, join me in um, a round of applause uh, for Mr. Uh, Carl Iwasaki, 2020 Employee of the Year of the BWS. <laughs>
Additionally, some of the mains being replaced are non-standard size and contain asbestos concrete pipe making continued breaks and repairs in this system difficult to repair. And as was mentioned in the public hearing, this is a, a programmed project for fiscal 22, but due to construction conflicts with a DTS uh, roads project in the area, we're pushing it up to 21 so that we can get this project done without delay. We're adding a brand new project. It's the Kalawahine 180 2 million gallon reservoir connecting pipelines. So the first project mentioned where we're just increasing to 18.2 million is for the reservoir itself. This amount is for the pipelines to connect that reservoir to our system. So that's 18.2 million for the pipeline and 1.82 million um, to the construction cost index account. So again, this project was anticipated to be budgeted over two fiscal years, but bids came in in June over the amount that was available. So we're coming back to you folks now to ask for sufficient funding to make awards on this contract. And while we're also consider splitting as presented into two separate projects. This resolution also reduces funding for our Haiku Stairs project. So it's a removal of Haiku Stairs, which was originally programmed at $100,000 as a placeholder. But we no longer need this funding uh, because the land, the stairs and the land around it was transferred to the city on July 1st. So amendment to the budget would add the Lanakai Water System Improvements Project. But add the um, increase, the Kalawahine uh, 182 million gallon reservoir project. Um, it'll add the pipelines related to the Kalawahine reservoir for 18.2 million. It will also add a new project line item for the Monona Corporation Yard Lab and Control Center expansion for a total of $3 million. It's removing Haiku stairs, um, item number 51, and increasing the construction cost index um, adjustment account for all of the new construction being proposed. Increasing the contract adjustments account in these amounts for a total of 2.3 million, bringing the total contract adjustments account up to 17.3 million from 15. And so the following summarizes the budget amendment. It was, the budget was originally adopted at $170,127,500. We've added $25.4 million worth of new projects, modified one existing appropriation to increase it by $1.2 million, and deleted a project that was previously funded for $100,000. We've also increased our construction cost index account by $2.66 million and increased our contract adjustments account by $2.3 million for a total fiscal 20 to 21 CIP budget of $201,587,500. This is the resolution. Um, with the totals. Any questions? Members, any, any questions? Okay, hearing none, um, I would like to uh, entertain a motion uh, for acceptance of this at this time for, of resolution number 915 uh, 2020 as presented by uh, Ms. Nakabayashi uh, a copy of the resolution is uh, in the record, um, copies of which have been distributed. Um, do I hear a motion for approval? Chair, yeah, this is very, I so move. I second. Jay. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I do have a motion uh, for approval of resolution number 915-2020 by board member Soon and seconded by member Butai. Uh, is there uh, 
Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, um, I will just want to check for the record. Uh, uh, do we have anyone, Mr. Nor Mr. Nordstrom, do we have anyone on the line? No, no, no. Okay, thank you. And uh, Manager Lau, any other testimony that may have been received? Uh, none, none, sure. Okay, let the record reflect that there has been no um, testimony submitted on this uh, subject. Uh, if there is no further uh, discussion, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of adopting resolution number 915-2020, please say aye. Um, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Roll call. Madam Secretary, roll yeah. call vote, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Kapo Sprout. Aye. Board Member Ray Soon. Aye. Board Member Ross Asamura. Aye. Board Member Jade Butai. Aye. And Chair Brian Andaya. Aye. Thank you, Chair. Motion passes with five ayes. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Um, resolution number 915-2020 uh, is approved. I will now uh, move on to item number four of um, the agenda. Uh, and this is adoption of resolution number 916-2020. And this resolution uh, is um, a resolution of appreciation for our very own board member, uh, Kei Matsui, uh, who uh, is um, leaving uh, the board. Um, Ms. Matsui was uh, contacted, and I believe. Uh, is she, uh, Kay coming? I'm sorry. Is Kay coming to the meeting? I believe not. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I believe she's had some uh, other commitments uh, today that she's not able to be here. But um, uh, we did uh, prepare a uh, resolution for her, uh, and we also have a, a lay for her. Uh, so um, hopefully, I'll, I'll ensure we uh, get the lay and the resolution to her. Yeah, hopefully at yeah. some point we can get this to her. Um, yeah. She has been a very valuable part of the, the board, and that, um, I, on behalf of the entire board, I think we want to uh, say mahalo uh, to um, to Kay for us uh, yes. for her service uh, to the board and to the city and county. Thank you. Okay, um, and and just to make it official, um, do I have a motion to approve res to uh, to approve the adoption of resolution number nine one six twenty twenty at this time? Chair, this is Ross. So move. Thank you. This is Kapuai, second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we have a, a motion on the floor um, by Board Member Sasamura, seconded by Vice Chair Sprout, uh, to approve our resolution in appreciation of our colleague, uh, Ms. K. Matsui. Any discussion? Hearing none, a roll call vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Kapoor Sprout. Aye. Board Member Ray Sood. Aye. Board Member Ross Asamura. Aye. Board Member Jade Butai. Aye. Chair Brian Andaya. Aye. Chair, motion passes with five ayes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we're now going to move on to our items for information today. Um, first is the update on fee waivers for affordable, homeless, and automatic fire sprinkler retrofit projects. Chair recognizes uh, Deputy Manager Ellen Kitamura, who is, I believe, going to join us by um, uh, Web WebEx. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Andaya and board members. Um, this afternoon, I'd like to present our annual update of the Board of Water Supply fee waivers for the affordable, homeless, and automatic fire sprinkler electric projects. 
These fee waivers were included in the current schedule of recent charges that was adopted by the board in September 2018. Uh, the waivers for the affordable and homeless project supports the city's initiative to encourage development of affordable and homeless dwelling units. And it also uh, encourages the um, uh, city's initiative to for automatic fire sprinkler retrofit projects uh, to encourage high rise to high rises existing high rises to retrofit the buildings with automatic fire sprinkler systems. Okay, the table that you see before you is a summary of the total fee waivers granted. Uh, so far in fiscal years 2019 and 2020. The first row in cyan are the estimates that were done in 2018 before the program began. Uh, Board of Water Supply met with the Department of Planning and Permitting and to determine a reasonable estimate based on their long-term affordable and home housing projections. So as you can see in uh, fiscal year 2019, we had, uh, we approved 76 affordable dwelling units, uh, 102 homeless dwelling units uh, for a total of 178 units. And uh, the fees that were waived for that year were $159,064.03. Uh, in fiscal year 2020, the affordable dwelling units increased to uh, 302. There were no homeless dwelling units approved that year or last year. And we waived a fee of $546,578.41. So to date, you see the, uh, on the bottom what we have approved so far and the annual, uh, the total amount of fees that were waived. $705,642.44. These fees would have gone into the special expendable funds uh, for infrastructure in uh, expansion projects, uh, such as new reservoirs and transition mains. And I'd like to note, uh, to date, we have not received any requests for waivers for the uh, retrofit uh, of automatic fire sprinkler systems. Um, and uh, through the first quarter of this fiscal year, we have not uh, received any requests for uh, any of the affordable homeless or retrofit projects. Um, but it's still early, we're still in the first quarter. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? So the next two slides um, are just a summary of the uh, developments that were approved and also the qualified units and the fees that were waived. Uh, this is for fiscal year 2019. Next slide. This shows the developments that were approved uh, last fiscal year 2020. Next slide. Uh, what you see here is just a screenshot of um, the language that we have in our rates and charges, uh, scheduled rates and charges. Um, I'd like to point out that there is an annual cap of 500 dwelling units um, that is approved every fiscal year. And um, should a project come in that um, may bump the total dwelling units above 500, the manager and chief engineer has discretion to increase the, the year's limit. And these waiver, project, uh, waiver provisions shall expire on June 30th. 2023 and uh, this is both for the affordable and homeless and uh, dwelling units and also for the fire sprinkler retrofit. Uh, mm. Next slide. Uh, but this is just additional information um, for the fee waivers. So um, to be eligible, the developer must obtain a letter from the city certifying that the project is an affordable housing or homeless project. Um, the fees will be waived when the building permit is submitted for a review and approval, so the project uh, needs to be ready to go. Fee waivers are not retroactive, so if you had a project in the past, you will not be eligible for these fee waivers. And fee waiver, 
reimburse uh, apply only for fixture units associated with the affordable housing and homeless dwelling units. So if a project comes in that's a mixture of market and um, affordable, then the waivers are only applicable to the dwelling units um, that are deemed affordable. And this is identified, um, the, the amount of units are identified by the city um, in that letter of certification and also in the building permit that's submitted. Uh, we do report annually on the amount of dwelling units um, and all the fee waivers that are appro uh, approved uh, by the uh, Board of Water Supply. And um, the effective date of the program um, was September 15, 2018, uh, Resolution 889-2018. And as I said previously, the uh, fee waiver program will expire on June 30th. 2023. So that concludes my report. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, um, Deputy Manager uh, Kitamura. Members, any questions? I, I do have a question. Uh, first, I want to say I'm really glad we helped those all those families. Um, I wish we had more, but um, I think it's realistic given the, the times. Um, I am curious as to why the, uh, the fire retrofits were brighter at zero um, applications. Do you have any? any um, yeah, my understanding is um, when they uh, approved the program, what they did was uh, allow the, the um, I guess the high rises that uh, would qualify for this um, to do something called like a life safety evaluation. So they would look at all of their systems and take uh, to see if instead of putting in or installing a uh, automatic fire sprinkler system, were there other things that were available, um, such as uh, smoke detectors, um, um, other. Uh, I guess fire prevention type of um, equipment that would be able to qualify and then there's like a matrix that uh, the fire department um, will visit and run through it. They, they also um, hire I think a, a consultant to do this and potentially if they're able to do um, those kind of improvements instead of the uh, retrofitting, then it would be uh, a cost savings measure. Um, so my understanding is that they're still going through this process. They have, uh, I think they maybe have like a three or five year window in order to perform this analysis. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that they're going through that now and then um, that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen anything. Um, I think the only inquiry that we've had so far was for the Marco Polo, and then that was the reason why um, this resolution was um, adopted by city council. Um, but they themselves have not come in with the building permit itself. We just had an inquiry from them. Okay, thank you. Members, um, any, anyone else? If not, I got a um, couple. Um, so I do note a um, big increase in the number of total qualified units um, from fiscal year 1819 to 1920, increase of about 70%. Um, I suppose that's a good thing um, in terms of um, making more affordable units available. Um, I, I did want to ask about, um, are there any that are disapproved for whatever reason? Or as I know, um, no. Uh, however, I think Garrett is on the line. Um, he is uh, involved with Garrett. Would you be able to uh, answer the chair's question? Good afternoon, board members and chair. Um, I don't recall any. It would only get disapproved if it wasn't certified by a city agency like Department of Planning and Permitting. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah, so uh, that 
that is a good point is that uh, we've had several inquiries and one of the uh, things that we uh, and, uh, make sure that the developers understand is that they need to be able to have DPP or one of the other city agencies that could actually be uh, land management also um, to certify um, because the Board of Water Supply really we wouldn't know if there was an affordable project or not, this actually goes through uh, DPP. So that would be actually, if anything, it would be, this approval would happen at the, uh, the city agencies. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Uh, Chair, Chair, that was Garen Hamasaki. He's from our service engineering uh, branch in the customer care division. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you very much, Garen. Thanks for answering the question, Garen. Sorry, <laughs> put you on the spot there. <laughs> Sorry, well, one more. Um, is there a correlation between uh, qualified units and the fees waived? For example, some of the um, some of them have a lot of units, but the fees waived is quite small. Is the is it does it go by the fixture size, the water meter size? Garen, you want to answer that? Just, uh, we base the fees based on plumbing fixture units. Yeah, the fees are based on fixture units. It, it might be uh, misleading as far as number of units and number of fixture units waived. Um, they do get credit for demolished fixtures. So the waiver would only be for whatever um, fixtures they go over their credit. So yeah, it's hard to correlate it just based on the dwelling unit. If it was a brand new building, then yeah, we would charge for all fixtures. But sometimes they would just uh, retrofit an existing building. That already has a water meter and plumbing I see. fixtures. Correct. Yes. I see. Okay. Okay, that's uh, all the questions I had. Anyone, anyone else? If not, uh, thank you very much, Ellen, for the report. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks, Garen. All right, we're going to move on now. Item number two. Item number two for information is the 2020 Water Conservation Program update. And Chair recognizes um, uh, Ms. Elliot Pahinui and uh, Ms. Uh, Lorna Heller. Thank you. <clears throat> mahalo, Chair. Mahalo, uh, Manager Lau and uh, board members. Uh, so Lorna and I uh, gave this presentation last year, and we want to try and present every year to you guys so you can see what our efforts are on water conservation. This becomes especially important um, in years like this when we're experiencing drought, and I'm sure Barry will touch further on that in his water resources report. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Lorna to get us started. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Kathleen. So. As you just heard, one of the programs we are doing, or we're doing is called the Water Festival. Here's a picture that shows the team members who help out with this program. We have Catherine from the Conservation Branch on the left. We have Stephen from Communications Office, who is actually in the boardroom right now. And we also have Marcus, who is our consultant from Honeywell. This picture is from one of our public outreach events we attended where we are able to promote the Water Festival program, both on the residential and commercial side. On the left side, you can see the current residential rebates, like the clothes washer, rain barrel, and the WIPIC, which actually stands for weather-based irrigation controllers. On the right side, we have commercial programs that consist of WaterSmart, the direct installation of shower heads and aerators, as well as the food service, which includes a free pre-rinse spray nozzles and aerators, and the WIPIC on the commercial side as well. Okay, next slide. This shows a timeline of how Water Sensible has evolved starting in June 2017. We contracted with Honeywell and then started with the management of Water Smart. In 2018, we kicked off with the residential clothes washer and rain barrel rebates. In 2019, we started with the food service program in January, and then in March, we went on to the WIBIC, and in May, we began the direct install program. Due to the pandemic, we have put a pause on the direct install program for the safety and health of everyone. All of these programs have been doing really well, so coming up, you'll see how the progress is going for the water sensible rebates. Okay, next slide. Thank you. 
The Water Conservation Program Plan was developed to guide program decisions and opportunities, establish a business case model that identified 15 conservation measures for implementation with associated water and cost savings and for our organizational staffing needs. The current measures we have launched are these listed here. The closed washer is a $75 rebate for customers and applies to Energy Star labeled closed washers only because they are water efficient. We also have a $40 rebate for rain barrels, which is a good way to utilize water that would normally evaporate or run out into the ocean. Rain barrels collect water from the roof gutters that can be used for irrigation of plants and also provide supplemental non-potable water during natural disasters. The most recent rebate we have is the weather-based irrigation controllers, or what we call the WIPIC. Customers can apply for 50% not to exceed $100 on an EPA water sense labeled WIPIC, which can save up to 7,600 gallons of water per year. The food incentive program targets efficient water use in restaurants through pre-rinse spray nozzles and a kitchen aerator, both at 1.0 gallons per minute, reducing hot water use in water, restaurants also saves energy. So thanks to Kathleen and her team, they put together all of these things that you see here in front of you, as well as other posters we have. Next slide. Okay, each month Honey, Honeywell produce a dashboard which allows us to get a snapshot of how the sensible rebates are going. There's a lot of information here, so I just want to point out um, the most popular rebate we have here is the clothes washer with over 4,100 applications processed up to the month of August. Rain barrels rebated 152 since the inception of the program. We've noticed that big box stores have difficulty in stocking this, so therefore we are ramping up on our messaging through um, that the rebates are available for online purchases as well. We have seen Wibix increasing, maybe because people have been home or during the pandemic making upgrades to their irrigation system. As of last month, we processed 119 applications. And I said before, the food service and direct installation continue to be free, but due to the pandemic, the numbers will remain low. Because of this, we have been looking at different ways to push out messaging and will proceed with these two incentives when it is safe to do so. Okay. Uh, next slide. Here's a summary of the rebates that we have given out to date. As you can see on the table, we have given out a total of 4,387 rebates. Although this equates to over $322,000, this is all to save an estimated amount of over 27.6 billion gallons of water per year. The three pie charts in the bottom of this slide shows you where the customers are purchasing their washers, rain barrels, and their Wibix. I wanna just point out to you that under the rain barrels, you'll see the NEX in orange. It's a bigger portion. Um, just keep in mind that the participants are required to be Board of Water Supply customers to qualify for these rebates. The largest retailer for the rain barrels currently is Hardware Hawaii, as they have and continue to be a great partner with Board of Water Supply for Detect a Leak Week. Communications works closely with their merchandising, merchandising buyer, Dave, um, to promote, promote our rebate program in all of the Hardware Hawaii stores. And as I mentioned, business is going really well for them. They can hardly keep these um, rain barrels on their shelves. Okay, next. Okay, we want all our customers to have a positive experience going through the rebate process. So all our customers that receive a rebate have an opportunity to respond to a satisfaction survey. Results have averaged 9.3 out of 10, which we feel that one of our contributing factors the success is the speed of our customer receiving the rebate check. Although the application states that the processing time is between four to six, I'm mean six to eight weeks, sorry, our current average time is 4.85 weeks. Okay. Um, the Board of Water Supply Master Plan established a uh, performance scorecard for the water conservation program. The conservation funding targets 8% of the CIP and in 2016 amounted to an annual saving spend of 3.35 million. BWS continues to increase the program capacity from 0.8 million in 2016 to 1.08 in 2017 to 1.5 million in fiscal year 2018 and 2019, then to 2.08 um, in fiscal year 2020. In fiscal year 2021, we're proposing 2.04 million, which is about 60% of the 3.35 million goals set in fiscal year 2016. 
Although we are growing at a slower rate due to the pandemic and COVID, our fundings have increased by a million dollars since 2017 to now. The metrics, performance metric is indicated in the colored dots. The red dot means GOLA was missed by greater than 10% and means that Port of Wild Supply is working to improve the level of service in that area. The green dot is meeting the goal. Per capita demand fluctuates with the weather and tourists present and the residents absent. Per capita demand is 155 gallons per capita per day with a goal of decreasing to 145 gallons per capita per day by 2040. The gallon per capita per day will be calculated again when we obtain an accurate population data after the 2020 census. Okay. Hey, thanks, okay. Lorna. Appreciate it. Um, so on the uh, communication side, uh, what we do is we have a small advertising campaign. Many of you may have seen our TV commercials, which have been running since June. Because uh, we are have experiencing drought this year, and uh, you know we had more people home, obviously, because of COVID, we started our campaign a little bit earlier than we normally do. We also did not have our plant sale this year, so we figured we could repurpose some of those funds, it's not very much money, but into water conservation messaging. Also disaster prep, uh, we're still in hurricane season, so the timing was good uh, for moving around some of our funding and starting to get that uh, messaging out a little bit earlier than normal. Next slide, please. One of the initiatives we work closely with the conservation uh, department is Water Smart. It's an online program. You can sign up and then you can see how much water you're using against your neighbors. And then we send helpful tips. Uh, our initial registration was a little on the slow side, so we've thought of some uh, creative ways to improve that. So here you see some of our social media posts. And then we have a little flyer there on, I guess, be my right-hand side uh, that we handed out and sent to neighborhood boards. One of the things you can also do with WaterSmart is uh, you can set alerts for possible leaks. We know leaks is one of the ways uh, people see an increase in their water bill, and usually once the leak is filled or uh, fixed, the bill will go back down to where it normally is in their usage. So you can set that up on your WaterSmart as well. So we actually have been doing the rounds with the morning TV shows, and in July after uh, Stephen went on, Stephen helps us manage his programs with Lorna's team, and he went on uh, one of the morning news shows, and we saw a, a significant spike in uh, signups. So we know people have an interest. Uh, we think partly because they are home too, they have they're what, looking at these things more closely than perhaps they were in the past. Next slide, please. Rain barrel workshops. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we have not had our workshops this year. But you know, we have. Um, been selling rain barrels since 2008 when we really rolled out the program. We've sold nearly a thousand barrels. Uh, we have worked with uh, several council members over uh, the course of this year to work with specific residents in their communities. We've gotten a few phone calls and Lorna's team has gone out there and worked with them to uh, help them set up rain barrels, specifically a group of senior citizens in the Pearl City area. We were very happy to be able to be of service to them. Next slide, please. And uh, despite everything, our annual poster contest and poetry contest did go ahead as planned. Uh, we did have to tweak it a little bit. We did not hold an award ceremony this year, but we were still able to honor our students by doing online mentions through social media and featuring the posters and poems that way. We had a, a very good year. Um, we had over 1,000 posters and just over 600 poems, and 56 schools participated. And our calendar is currently being printed. One of the other good things we did this year is we moved our printing over across the street to the city print shop and since saved significant sum of money uh, that you know can stay within the board for other projects and things like that. So we're very proud of the fact we were able to still publish a beautiful calendar and still save the agency money as well. Next slide, please. Uh, again, we had to uh, cancel all of our events and tours this year, unfortunately, but what we did is we turned to social media and increased use of video. 
uh, to get our messaging out there and to work with our teams. Uh, the team's all been tasked with doing little mini videos to come up with promoting initiatives, uh, you know, on main breaks. What do we do? How we repair main breaks? How to check for leaky faucets? Uh, disaster prep. You know, we put our commercial up there as well. And of course, as I mentioned, Water Smart. Uh, some of our teams now working on virtual tours, tours of Waihee and Halava Shaft. Next, please. And then finally, I encourage you, everyone, to go online to our um, website, um, our uh, uh, CRS team, especially Sherry McCommy, who oversees our garden, has put together some very creative little videos uh, to show how to um, uh, propagate plants. And Ellen actually has done, I think, all of them so far, most of them, and uh, has said they're very successful. And we've actually uh, put them up on Facebook and have gotten a lot of positive uh, feedback and response from the community. So this is one way we're still able to get our messaging out. Uh, we will be filming Arthur shortly to do our Christmas wreath, which has always been one of our most popular workshops. So we're going to get him out there showing how to do a Christmas wreath uh, with uh, Hawaii native plants uh, for the holidays. Next slide. So thank you everybody. So despite COVID, uh, we've been out there still promoting and getting our message out on conservation, uh, just being more creative and coming up with new ways to uh, reach the public. So thank you very much. If there are any questions. Members, any questions? And Kathleen, help me understand what the, the television ads, what's the, um, the, the messaging you're trying to achieve on that? It's just uh, the, the, the one in the shower and, and the other one. Yes, uh, about in 2004, we did a survey of the community and some focus groups. And we said, you know, what do you want us to do to tell you how to save water to conserve? Instead of this kind of global messaging, please don't waste water. What is it that you want? And they came back to us and said, if you can tell us precisely exactly what you want us to do, we'll do it. So we came up with the seven tips. And our commercials are generally based around that seven tips. So shorter showers, don't wash your car with leaving the water running, fix leaky faucets, things like that. They wanted practical information. And when we did that, we did see a decrease in water consumption about 10% year over year. And so we've just been refining that message every year just to remind people that these are things that you can see people wasting water. It's just a good reminder for them to watch their water usage. Okay, so I'm going to venture into probably a little bit of a area that maybe I'm not so stable. Um, do you get any pushback on the, the television ad having to do with the lady taking the shower and the guy washing the rice over her? No, we you? haven't. Oh, okay, okay, good. Well, and no pushback. No, in fact, I think somebody once saw it with the frying pan and said, oh, it should be a different kind of implement that he's washing in the shower. Okay. Okay, then, um, I, I mean, people I, who have talked to me and say, what, what, you know, what, what's your brand? What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Because it, it just didn't come across to them as um, a brand we, we, were, we were pushing. And, um, but if you're not getting any pushback, then... Um, actually, that's one of our more popular commercials. We actually do get some positive feedback on it. People find it humorous. They understand what we're trying to say, at least when we've shared it with people. Okay. okay Thank thanks. you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the question. Members, any, anyone else? Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, thank you very much, uh, Kathleen and Lorna, for uh, working on uh, this conservation program. So, item, item number two the status report and chair recognizes Ms. Uh, Michelle Thomas. Good afternoon, board and board members. Um, the I'm here to present to you the recruitment status report for the period of May 2020 to July 2020. Um, for the period of May 2020 to July 2020, we had 23 new hires, four promotions, one transfer, 10 separations, 
21 new approvals to fill and eight canceled requests. As you can tell by the reports that are in front of you, we have continued to move forward on filling our vacancies as much as possible and our recruitments have not slowed down. We do anticipate, however, uh, that we will be getting quite a few more retirements as we approach the end of the year. We have already been uh, receiving uh, requests for retirement, so we do anticipate that we will be uh, receiving additional, especially during this current situation with COVID. However, it is the board's position that we will continue to recruit as much as possible in order to be able to provide job opportunities to um, our um, constituency here on Oahu. Um, is, at this point, is there any questions? Members, any questions? Um, I want to um, ask uh, something. Um, so, Manager, um, is the plan, um, you know, the moving forward, the 12 months, 24 months, maybe, um, in terms of recruiting and keeping our staffing levels, is the plan to uh, continue on pace, or are we going to? Oh, uh, go ahead. Um, you know. Um, you know, slow slow down the recruitments, or is it going to continue? Uh, our current plans are right, are to continue. However, we are watching the uh, the the potential impacts that the uh, pandemic may have on revenue, rate right, revenue coming in. Because at the end of the day, the board of water supply is financially self sufficient, but it really depends on people paying their water bills. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we see, a, and we don't have uh, we. Are not shutting off water at least till the end of the year, uh, because we understand that when you're at home, you're asked to uh, socially distance. Good sanitation, having water at home is very important right now, even if you're having difficulty paying the bills. But we want our customers to pay the bills uh, ultimately at some point in time. They are. We have to watch these revenues as they come in. So if the revenues start to dip and we start to see an impact, we may be more selective on which vacancies we fill and start to prioritize them. Okay, that, that, that sounds good. I mean, we hear about um, in the news um, other agencies and, um, you know, talking, um, you know, about managing their budgets and, and, and whatnot, so. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for us, we have to operate within the budget we we have the money that we have to operate our water systems and provide this important service to our community. I think generally the city is continuing to fill vacancies because there are a lot of uh, people that are unemployed looking for jobs right now. Uh, so I think the, the mayor is uh, committed to try to create jobs, uh, hire, continue hiring. Of course, the budget will be the limiting factor. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions? All right, um, thank you very much, Michelle, for the report. Um, if there's nothing else, I'm going to move to the next item. All right, um, let's move to the next item. Thank you, Michelle. Um, the status update of groundwater levels at all index stations. Chair recognizes Mr. Barry Usagawa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and board members. Uh, for the uh, month of August, we have three aquifer index stations and one groundwater status. We start with Punalu and Waihei Tunnel, which are in caution, and Tamaki is in alert. Uh, the potable production for August was 148 and a half million gallons per day. <laughs> the rainfall index for August is 41% of normal. That's quite low, and the five month moving average of 57 percent uh, shows that we are in a, a drought condition. Um, the Hawaii drought monitor as of September shows that not only drought conditions for Oahu and moderate drought conditions for leeward Oahu stretching from Pearl Harbor to Haleiwa and to the leeward coast. The National Weather Service continues to predict low rainfall averages for September and October so we'll continue these uh, low uh, rainfall months uh, for the for at least another you know, through October for another month and a half or another month. 
and then we'll see what the forecast is um, uh, next month. Uh, but most monitor wells are uh, decreasing because of the dry weather, um, and the production is actually lower. So maybe I could show you that if um, you could go to the last page, please, of this report, or, and go up to the rainfall, please. Thank you. Uh, so you can see from, uh, you know, we had some good rains in March, uh, but then since then we've had five months of below normal rainfall, which is the red line there. Uh, the average um, line there, uh, squiggly line, uh, is at 60%. So when we get about 60% or more of average rainfall, it's, it starts to uh, impact the, the water levels and usually uh, water levels, water production usually rises. Uh, so 60% or lower is um, typically a drop condition. Um, the, as, a, as a comparison, uh, when we had our severe drought in 2003, we had about nine months of below normal rainfall and it went through the winter. Uh, usually in the winter time, we, um, are, are glad to see um, winter rains that replenish the aquifer. Uh, if the winter rains are drier, then, then you don't get that replenishment and then you head into the next season of, of, of hot weather and water levels tend to uh, drop even further. When we had our drought committee meeting, um, the Oahu drought committee meeting in June, the National Weather Service did not forecast an El Nino situation or condition uh, which normally results in dry winters. Um, so we expect rainfall this winter unless they change their, their forecast. And then if you could scroll down to the last uh, graph, the production graph, please. So what you see there in green is the uh, 2020 production. We're at 148 and a half. Uh, but you see it's under the gray line, which is the five-year monthly average. And in fact, last year was even hotter. Uh, I mean, the water use was even higher, over 150. Uh, in that 2003 period, uh, the average uh, monthly uh, production actually was close to 170. So we're up at, you know, we're like 20 NGD lower than, than uh, what we saw uh, 17 years ago. And that's largely due to the successful efforts of our conservation program. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Kathleen's group, uh, Communications and Learners Water Conservation Group for the efforts that they, they um, have in, done in our conservation program, because it's, it's really made a difference in, in the lowering the water demand and uh, keeping more water in our aquifers. Now, um, the effect of COVID um, in Waikiki, we've seen about 3 million gallons less because it's really affecting the tourism industry. And, and so you, know, you see the green line um, should be, the tip of view would be above 150 at this time of year. But uh, because of that, uh, there's, there's a double edged sword, it's affecting the economy, but the water use is lower. And so it's keeping the, the more water in our aquifers and having less of an impact. So that's the observations I see from this graph, and I'm uh, available for any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, uh, Barry. Um, members, any questions? Do we have any areas where we are requiring or requesting reduced consumption or any requirements for reduced consumption? Yes, I believe, and Kathleen, maybe you can help me no. here um, in Hawaii Kai. Yeah. What happened, Ray, from about Keaholi to the Hawaii Kai Golf Course a couple weeks ago, for some reason there was a huge spike in usage. And so our operations manager, uh, water operations, Kevin E., who had asked us to put out some messaging. So uh, we did a news release and social media just so the, the reservoirs could recover. And, and we also made the effort of calling out, we actually made phone calls to all the large, like, the shopping malls, condominiums, property management, the schools, et cetera, and asking them to hold off uh, using water. For some reason, there just was a spike down there. We're not sure why, but. 
And and so that's been lifted and we're back to normal. Yeah. yeah well, we didn't actually go out with the message saying don't use it. We're hoping people will still not use a lot of water. We just haven't been going out with more messaging. <laughs> Just kind of a little sneaky there, but uh, yeah, we're just trying to get people to be very conscientious, especially right this, now. Despite we have being in drought conditions and being worried, a little bit worried, um, we're not, we don't feel a need, we don't feel we need to restrict the usage at all. Uh, at this point time, it's uh, voluntary conservation and our, yeah. our messaging. Uh, but if this continues, like Barry said, uh, if we actually have a very dry winter, then uh, we'll ratchet up the conservation messaging. Uh, we haven't hit the place to trigger restrictions on water use yet. Yeah, in fact, we had in 2003, we had seven index wells in low groundwater status, and now we have three. So just as a comparison, uh, and I might add that the mayor just came out with a, a, a letter asking for water conservation for all city facilities to um, use less water, uh, fix your leaks, and uh, uh, fix your irrigation system. So I believe that was through Kathleen's office. Uh, but yeah, the, the leading by example, the mayor uh, did come up with a, a, letter, a memo today uh, to all city departments to conserve water to help us with the drought. Not just the city, Ray, we also sent to military installations, even though most of them aren't on our system, we still all work together. And then we also sent it to key agencies at the uh, state level as well. Okay. I, I, I don't know. No, others aren't as nervous as I am. I mean, it hasn't even rained on our side of the island for a long time. Um, and, uh, you know, climate change is real. And I, I'm just beginning to ask myself, well, so when do we start worrying? I'm yeah. worried. When there's more of the, that's why we, we have the index well system. Uh, when there's more of the uh, index wells in low groundwater, and, and especially what the levels are, uh, and what their trends are, and the, and the weather forecast going forward. So, um, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll continue to monitor it. And hopefully the, the National Weather Service will update their forecasts as to what they anticipate rainfall may, uh, what we may experience toward the uh, this, this winter. If we have a if we have a normal winter, they'll recover. So. Okay. Thank you for your concern. Uh, may I ask, uh, Member Soon, uh, are the yards in uh, East Honolulu green yet, or are they browning out? And none, of, none of us have turned off our sprinklers. So yeah, they're they're green, and, and they shouldn't be. <laughs> so uh, yeah. uh, uh, we'll we'll be sure to uh, increase the uh, conservation messaging to the neighborhood board through the neighborhood boards in the area too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, any further comments? Okay, if not, uh, we're gonna move on to our final item on the regular agenda today. It's the water main repair report for August 2020. Chair recognizes Mr. Mike Fouke. Okay, good afternoon, Chair and board members. Uh, during the month of August, we had uh, 37 main breaks and the average time for us to repair the six, eight and 12 inch breaks was approximately 14 hours. Um, the leak detection team surveyed approximately 14 miles and in those 14 miles, they found a one service line leak. They also found a valve leaking. And they were also able to find two mains that was leaking that we were able to uh, address before it, it turned into anything major. Okay, uh, basically that's my report. Are there any questions? Members, any questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you very much, Mr. Fuke, you. for your report. That brings us to our, the end of our regular agenda. We do have a short uh, executive session today. Uh, if I could have a motion to uh, go into executive session, um, that would be appreciated. I move that we go into executive session. Mr. Ross, I second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's been uh, moved um, and seconded. Uh, to move into uh, executive session, 
uh, to consult with our attorney on, on questions regarding um, a, a claim. Madam Secretary? Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Post Pro? Aye. Board Member Ray Soon? Aye. Board Member Ross Asamura? Aye. Board Member Jade Uchai? Aye. And Chair Brian Andaya? Aye. Chair, motion passes with five ayes. Okay, thank you very much. We now um, stand um, in recess while we prepare for uh, executive session. I call for a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting today. This is Jay, it's so moved. Uh, is there a second? second? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, uh, adjourn the meeting today. Um, is there any discussion? He hearing none, um, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair Kapos Pro. Aye. Board Member Ray Soon. Aye, aye. Board Member Rasa Samura. Aye. Board Member Jade Butai. Aye. Chair Brian and Daya. Aye. Chair, motion passes with five ayes. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you one very much, everyone.